with regards to uh, what is happening in Kenya, I don't think that we have to wait for the backlash of what the youth did in Kenya for us to do the things that we have to do. And that's why I started talking. I said, look, the time has come for us to act and that it can't be business as usual. The Kenyan youth have sent a signal to the whole of Africa that they will push back if the leaders don't do the right thing. And so definitely I'm signaling that it will not be business as usual in our new administration. We'll cut out waste, we'll cut out opulence, we'll bring a code of conduct for public sector, uh, public appointees, especially political appointees, in how they behave in terms of their modesty, in terms of their humility. Your appointment to that office is an opportunity to serve. It's not an opportunity to lord it over the people. And so our political appointees and public office holders must change their attitudes. And so that is what we're going to insist on, that people that we appoint are modest people, they are humble, they will open up to the people, and they'll do the things that will make the lives of our young people better. And so we're going to hold them to a higher criteria of service than, they have, uh, than people have been held to in the past. And that's why I say if you, uh, you agree to serve, you must serve and not have other side businesses and do other things. You must not go and buy state property. Anybody serving in my government will not be allowed to buy a state asset. Nobody serving in my government will buy a state asset. Vehicles or cars or buildings or land or anything, nobody serving in our government will be allowed to buy a state asset. I am a Christian and I belong to the Assemblies of God Church. Ordinarily building a house of God is something that we all do. I contributed monies in my local Assemblies of God branch to build our church and it's created an environment for us to praise and worship our God. But I don't condone stealing in the name of God. And that is what has happened in the case of this National Cathedral. It is instructive that members of the Board of Trustees, some of the members of the Board of Trustees have resigned and they have called for a forensic audit of the National Cathedral. I'm not saying it. Members on the board believe that fraud has been perpetrated against the people of Ghana and they are calling for a forensic audit. At the time this National Cathedral came up, it was somebody's personal commitment to God. And we are sure that public funds were not going to be used for the National Cathedral. Unfortunately, we hear that 300 and something million has gone into it. Where did those payments go? Were they justified? Who did they go to? These are all things that we have to unravel. And I think that that is the first thing we do before we even decide what to do with that huge pit. And so first, let's investigate and do a forensic audit. And if people have, you know, illegally and unlawfully taking the monies of the people of Ghana, they must be made to uh, re 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 refund those monies. And so that's the first thing I'll do with regards to the cathedral. Yeah, Titi Midase. I'm saying, Question I will say, no, yeah, there may be a no, eh, ever be be pray. Eh, me so me can say, a there, yeah, 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 say a bank, eba, na a shas here, any punto juma, ever be be pray. If you market and a school and a hospital, we may also buy for froba. Na a chess say, omu drink say, say omu discussion one. Credit no ever call a bank that an inching. In the normal trade, na omu anka somu akoshe omu diase. Now, make I say, say, I'm here at Domnia Bar. Sika, your war, your debasher, sir, and Jum and Puntumani Bibria, Aka. I just say, ye trail go, now ye dear Sika Shimonetim, ye be saying Jumano, and Sunny Asha say, and if for fro. It make I said, district be a bare inventory of all projects, sir. I just say, a buying a ba, a buying a co, Nina, Omeja, a go home. Now, every year, budget I be a beer, a be easy care good chain. Ah, I just said, you're the baby saying to my nineteen four years, sir. Mewa Bemwa, Mayor President, a Fibia, you're discovered to her. Send a bear every district in Juma, a Wawa, a chess, a yaja atom room, no, you're the size of canoe, a betwasso, na a ye, a sunny asha, send it for from. Because so called baby bria, classroom block in ye, Ube who not assembly, I can say, oh, yes, I send a classroom block for from. I can see you want to young and ye, near young ye, and I saw near Shasi and a for fro. And they are no me no yardring, say abandoned projects. I was here, now here, here. Now, Oka can't hold any taxes and levies. Apa Oshe, 
ade ba kwa ama Ghana kani na ye say ye ye favorite destination for investment and it say na ye taxes ni levies e wo form kakra and so afin so de em say senior aban ama ye economy no ahwe ase no IMF program a omo ko mu no IMF a catch rom say yet wa yet ji and as a revenue ye ye nya no e wo see page e ko do 24% can it near wo 15% taxes a omo dia to ye sui a page ya ya ba 17 point something percent and so omo say by 2028 i will see it do 24% it e che say omo nya yu ye say taxes na omo dey go e so no enya en dru e pempenso a eh ye be ka say eh omo omo wi enti na na omo pese omo dey vat e to electricity so that was one of the reason and so enya say ti use mo e ko ti aya anka by now electricity bill bia anka vat e da so ye nko ani oman a e wo wi ase ha nyina a e che say yare aba e ko a ye ji ye to e fa sa yare no covid levy covid aba e ko china be bia covid e free po ye ji omo covid levy and so gana nko ani e ji covid levy it is an your man who share emissions tax and it's our taxes in a year to a a buying edit to you so said as a result of imf agreement on my year it's no because oh me ba me cha a ton mu who are buying the music yes over to me to try to know she has a nature a a number to a ton number from you new home then i said i want to mommy answer me ba sir a toy may be here for you and see me i'll can no 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 one of the things I bear is say you be streamline that because when they say say we be call a jum na and perform your sa a ton a day. Baku a ye vat three percent. Baku ne vat a was stroke akra. Baku so vat ye twenty one percent. Meanwhile, we be the same customers. It is say me ba o hona o be jam me vat twenty one percent. I me call ne o be jam me three percent no. And you see a streamlining so that traders in Yina will pay the same rate in terms of value added tax. I feel so called Portua, send your kind of Toyota Vix. And then, many good for share may for an example of car beer will be imported and I may kind levies and taxes also. About 23 levies and taxes. So, what has a duty? And it's on your manner. I know you will harmonize ECOWAS. Tariffs into duty no one to me But the problem a year the levies and port charges it be are illegal. It's an see a bar will rationalize all those levies. Yeah, ni say what you be if you send a bay I be my turn up from Kakra. But the major thing I was saying in they say we have to stabilize the currency because it will affect to be beer. One of the reasons I'm and they said this week we'll be called now currency no yes bank of ghana say currency no exchange rate near say into start one on your bed you report the next week we'll be called now cd a free maybe a 14 about 15 into start one now which are in cities no nature say a cost row into one of the priorities of government will be to stabilize the currency and stabilize the economy send a bear will be a as some better no into mc and why are my man universities uh what are we going to do about tertiary educational institutions there are many challenges there. One of them is that students don't have enough hostels to live. And so they have to go for private uh, hostels. And the private hostels are expensive. And so one of our uh, 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 objectives in our manifesto will be to accelerate the building of hostels. And we're going to do that with private sector. The universities have lands. And so we can engage the private sector to build hostels. And we and them will agree on the fees that should be charged in the hostels. The government alone cannot build all the hostels to accommodate the students. But there are Ghanaians who have investable funds that they can use to provide hostels. If you go to the investors today, what they'll take you through in terms of uh, eligibility to build a hostel, they want to see your bank balance, they want to see this, they want to see, I mean, so many things. It makes it difficult for the private sector to come in. But if we apportion uh, some land in every university, and say people who want to invest in wholesales should apply. We'll go through the criteria fairly and transparently and allocate the lands for them to build so that our students can get accommodation. That would be one way of doing it. Aside from that, we'll uncap the GET Fund. This government has capped the GET Fund. 
And so any money that exceeds a certain statutory threshold goes into the consolidated fund. And so the GET fund is not receiving enough money. Apart from that, 60% of the GET fund has been collateralized with the Dachi bond. And so only 40% of a capped GET fund is available to continue projects. And so we'll uncap it and we'll uh, uh, liquefy the GET fund so that it's able to continue to do the work it's doing. To ease the pressure on students, we will enhance the student loan scheme. Recently, I heard the administrator of the student loan scheme say there's a 50 million Ghana cities funding gap. And so they are not able to accommodate all the students in terms of the loans that they give. And so government must enhance the loan scheme so that the quantum is enough to be able to take the students through, but is also able to uh, cover uh, uh, as many students who need that support as possible. And so those are some of the things we'll do for um, uh, uh, tertiary education. TOR is a shame and a disgrace to our country. This was a flagship project by President uh, Nkrumah, and it was one of the first refineries to be built in Africa. Today, TOR is a pale shadow of itself. When I came, I did my best. I restarted TOR. They started refining uh, products. Indeed, before I left office, our first shipment of crude from our own oil field was given to TOR to refine. And then we left office. The new administration came. That shipload of oil sat in the tanks for years. Eventually, they discounted it and sold it out. And TOR hasn't worked since then till now. All TOR is surviving on is the revenue it gets.